Hello and welcome back everyone to this live video series on YouTube with me Anubhav on anubhavtrainings.com. In this video series, we are discussing about advanced ABAP syntax for RAP developers. If you're joining my RAP training and you're not comfortable yet with advanced ABAP syntax, this video series is free for you. You can understand how does the new ABAP syntax work and how to utilize it along with classic ABAP. In this video, we are going to talk about use of corresponding syntax. Last classes, we have seen the inline ABAP declaration and value expressions. So let's get started and talk about corresponding hash. Before we move on, if you're liking this video series, kindly feel free to subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon and share this video with your fellow colleagues in the WhatsApp group so that your friends and colleagues can also take advantage of this free video series with new ABAP syntax. So let's get started. We are going to proceed further now and we are going to continue in our same class which we are building since last two sessions to add another method to learn use of corresponding hash or corresponding. The use of corresponding is mainly for the purpose of moving data from one data objects to another. So let me just go ahead and create another static function in our class. Corresponding data. We will now declare our function. And we are just going to at all the components inside. All right, so let's go ahead and add this function over here and start writing the logic. So what I will be doing, I will be first declaring the data type, which we did similar to the last session. So let me get the data type in our current screen here. So I have a data type here, which has got all the data in the system and now I will just declare an internal table with some data. So we will just go ahead and create an internal table with some data like in the last episode. So in this internal table, I have three records. Record one, record two and record three. Yes. Now what I want to do, I want to create a, another internal table and assign the same data to that. In that case, I can go with corresponding hash. So let me declare my second internal table. And now what I will do, or maybe I can just say type this, I will move the data of my first internal table to second. Of course, you can use move corresponding in classic ABAP, which was the old syntax but there are benefits of the new syntax. So first let me show you simple movement like the old syntax, what in classic ABAP can do. So we have corresponding hash and LTG. So at the end of this statement, what will happen? All the data from the first internal table will move to the second internal table. So let's loop over the second internal table. and print the data. And I can just go ahead and put the variables. So I have added all the variables now. I can just activate. And when I execute this piece of code, Ultimately, I will be able to get my data from the second table. This is fairly simple, just like traditional ABAP. But what's the benefit? We will discuss that in a minute. So let me execute this. And when I run my function corresponding data, I get all the three records. Nice. Now, what's the benefit of this 
of this corresponding as compared to the old syntax in a web called move corresponding, right? In old web, we have move corresponding from one source to target, right? What's the benefit here? So one benefit is you can specify the fields which you want to exempt. So you can say accept. And then you can specify, let's say, I don't want to move the score. I just want to make a copy of all the data from this table to this table. But the score is something which I will be filling at later point of time. Yeah. So that is something, one benefit you get with the corresponding hash syntax. So let me run this now. And what you will see is we will be able to exempt certain data. So when I run, you see this value of score is initialized to zero in the target data set. So this is one benefit of corresponding hash. The second benefit, since the target, this particular target data type is already known to computer, you can see here, we've already specified the target data type. Already, I don't have to put here the data type. I can just put hash, which will do automatic casting or mapping of my data to one data type to another. Along with that, we also have another great feature. For example, if I have a, another type, let me create one more type. And this will be TT game two. I want to create. And here, instead of captain, I have the scrum lead. I have the scrum name, scrum team name, and I have the uh, how many goals they made. Yes. So this is my another data type, game two. And I'm creating my game two with type game two. In this situation, what happens is uh, that both the internal tables have the same data type. You see cat and cat and an integer, cat and cat and an integer, but their field names are different. You can clearly see the field names are different. So when the field names are different, we have a problem. The problem is the corresponding will not be able to detect the exact name of the fields and won't be able to move them from one side to another. That's that's like a big problem. Yeah. So that's where we can have now the concept of uh, another concept. We can have it where we can actually move plan this move with kind of a mapping. So instead of accept, I can also just comment out. So I'll leave this code. The entire source code will be shared with all of you in the description of this video. Kindly check the description. You will find the source code so that you can also copy paste and practice that in your in your company system. So now we can provide additionally the mapping. And we can say though both the tables, they don't have the same field name yet. I'm I'm computing the mapping. So my captain data goes from the uh, my captain data goes into the scrum. Okay. Unfortunately, game two is not yet declared properly. So game two have a scrum lead. Yes. So my captain data goes to the scrum lead. Basically, my scrum lead data is equal to captain. So captain data, which is coming from the LT game, should move to the scrum lead property of my game two. Yes. On a similar note, the scrum data is equal to the team name from the source and the goals is equal to the score from the team so this additional mapping we can now provide to be able to still move the data between two tables they have the similar columns yes in spite of that the data data is same is but the names of the columns are not matching yeah so that is the benefit you get it here with this one. So let's also print this data now, the new data type which we created for game two. Yes, this is our game two pointing to this second data type. Yeah. All right. So let's go ahead and activate and now test the logic. So we should get the same result. You can see all the results are same and we are able to move the data in spite of the column names not matching. So corresponding hash is a great uh, syntax heavily used in RESTful application programming also. 
especially when we write EML. We use this to map the keys for a business object when we are reading business object using EML. For example, read entities of yeah, our business object name, entity name, travel, for example. Yeah, and then we can say uh, corresponding keys. Yeah, so we can say keys or you know from or with fields with all fields and then we say uh, corresponding hash keys. So basically keys will be my input parameter in the wrap and this input parameter automatically maps to the input keys of your business object to read the data using EML. So this is where we also use it and also during manipulation many time we need to move data from one place to another we also heavily use the, the 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 concept of corresponding. You can also use corresponding during append statement, like you can say append corresponding hashtag the structure to a I tab two, for example, like this. So what happens in this case, in this situation, whatever fields are available in this structure, which has the same name as the internal table those fields will naturally get appended to the internal table. So that is also another use case for corresponding hash. So one is simple movement, second is movement without fields, third is movement without having the same name of the fields using mapping and then using in the append statement as well. You can also put accept star, star is representing the key so except the key fields, everything else will get moved if you have a key defined for the sorted table or in the internal table. So this is the way you can utilize the concept of corresponding hash in advanced app, app which is also utilized uh, heavily in RESTful application programming. I hope you like today's video. Thank you once again for joining this session. I hope to see you in my next episode. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe this video. See you in the next class. Goodbye.